Okay, now we're recording. Um, what is not an essential function of DNA? Three, two, one. Resistant to mutation. Um, yeah, so DNA does need to have a bit of susceptibility to mutation um, for new alleles and stuff like that. This is like the first lecture of the year, I think. Eukaryotic chromosomes have how many points of origin? And this is beneficial because Good, so a bunch of Ds, and yeah, that's right. So having multiple, um, it's a bit protective. So if you lose one, you can still replicate your DNA. What are telomerases for, important for? Also, by the way, if you have questions, um, drop it in the chat as well. Yeah, good. So it's both A and C. Um, telomerases help stop aging. Um, and yeah, they extend the lagging strand. Um, so you don't miss out the ends of your DNA. Okay, during DNA replication, an A base is accidentally joined instead of a G base. Um, what type of DNA proofreading will pick this up? My goodness, you guys are doing well. Yeah, good. So it's during DNA replication. Um, so therefore it's proofreading. Um, mismatch is like shortly after and then excision is just throughout the life of it, I believe. And then DNA is irre irrelevant. Which one is not, oh, sorry, which one is a post-translational modification? Yeah. Okay, a bit of a mixed response here. Okay, so this one is proteolysis. Um, proteolysis is just a bit more specific. Um, like when you produce insulin, you cut off the C peptide and you have the remaining insulin bit. Um, intron and exon splicing is, sorry, intron and exon splicing is post-transcriptional. Um, so just be careful of that. Um, DNA, I just made up. Um, yeah, it says proteolysis here. Which is a criticism of the WHO definition of health? Good, good. So it's often unachievable. Um, someone could be considered healthy, um, even if they don't have an arm for example, um, so it's a bit in that case. Macular adherens are different from zonular adherens because... Cool, couple Cs, that's nice. So both of them are adherens. Um, so they're going to help with adhesion, so they're sticking things. Um, and the way I remember the difference is because zonular, it has an O and it kind of looks around the whole way. Um, yeah, uh, whereas macula is kind of opposite. Macula is just like one point. Yeah, microvilli serve the, serve the what? So what important function? Sorry. Can you guys see the color difference between these? Yeah. Oops. Yeah, good. So it's increasing surface area. Um, so you'll find this in your gut to help absorb nutrients and stuff like that. Um, uh, this second one here is cilia. So kind of similar, but a bit different. Okay, so Mark has a congenital defect that prevents the proper development of chondrocytes, and this will likely affect what specialized cells? Ooh, good, good, good. So it's cartilage in this case. Um, so if osteocytes, chromaffin cells um, are part of like an endocrine system, 
fat is adipocytes and muscle is myocytes, I think. Yeah. Michael strains his Achilles tendon while playing basketball. Uh, what type of connective tissue is this? Sweet. Good. So it's regular dense. So regular means that it's all lined up parallel to each other. Um, and the fact that it's dense makes it super, super strong. Um, so this is important because your Achilles tendon is just like unidirectional um, force. Regenerative potential of connective tissue is most, most favored by what factor? So vascular, oh, sorry. Yeah, so vascular supply, neurovascular supply. Um, that's good. So things such as cartilage does, things such as cartilage, they won't repair that well um, because it's fairly limited. Whereas things like bone will repair fairly well because of the high neurovascular supply. So while doing a packer quiz, um, Peter doesn't take the time to properly read all of the options and picks the first one he sees. Uh, he gets it wrong and receives a bright red wrong, wrong screen and realizes that he should read all the options in the future questions. What type of consequence in operant condition? Sorry, good. So this one is positive punishment. Um, so it's positive because I am receiving this bright red wrong screen. So that's positive. Um, and it's punishment because it's dissuading me from um, picking the first one I see in the future. So it's trying to reduce this behavior through giving me a unfavorable stimulus. Self-efficacy is different. Um, Self-efficacy is different from self-esteem because Yeah, good. So self-efficacy is about our own abilities, whereas esteem is about like our self-confidence and self-worth. Once again, I forgot to change the color properly. Um, but yeah, so you don't need to speak the language. Um, however, you do need these three criteria here. Um, yeah. The main ion in intracellular fluid of nerve cells. Yeah, good. So it's potassium. So outside is salty, so outside is sodium and chloride, whereas inside is just um, potassium and um, protein anion, protein anions. Yeah. What three components are most are most crucial for hematopoiesis? Yeah, sweet. Yep. Yeah, so we need um, iron, B twelve, and folate. Um, deficiencies of these will give you some sort of anemia, which you'll learn about next year. So Joanna suffers from chronic kidney disease and is unable to produce sufficient amounts of the erythropoietin or EPO. What is the main effect this would have on her blood? Good, so unable to produce enough red cells because um, erythropoietin stimulates that. Which of the following does not lead to a right shift of the hemoglobin disassociation curve? Wait, have they oh. done this? Hmm? Yeah, what? I'm like, wait, is, this is heavy rasp. <laughs> no, they have done this. No, no, no this, was, this was in year one, I remember. Oh, I did not do oh, this last year. It was, yeah. it was that one lecture with one diagram. Yeah, so it looks so smart. How is it not so smart? Three, 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 three. Oh my goodness. Um, yeah, so... In, so the colour was different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's my bad. I'm just trying to help you guys. 
Um, so all of these will lead it to the right shift, um, whereas decreasing it will um, left shift it. Um, just remember that decreasing pH is the same as increasing H+, because that's a bit trippy and that's why you need chemistry to get in, apparently. 19, which is not correctly paired together. Yeah, all of these are the same color now. Oh, whoops. That was a broken question. What did I do here? Ignore this question. I'll fix it up later. <laughs> uh, question 20. Uh, Matthew is an 82 year old farmer in rural Victoria with late stage renal disease and rheumatoid arthritis. He struggles to get to his nephrologist at the public hospital because it's a six hour train. Wow, six hour train ride away or a five hour drive. Uh, according to the Tanahashi framework, why is Matthew unable to access healthcare? Yeah, good. So a ton of Ds. Um, so it's essentially unavailable, um, especially that he can't drive really with rheumatoid arthritis. Yeah, wow. I just keep changing the numbers around. I'm so sorry. Um, but yeah, good. It's, it's, a, it's essentially unavailable in his area. Uh, warfarin acts by interfering with clotting factors that require vitamin K. What factor is not affected? Yeah, good. Tons of A's. Nice. So you can remember the factors that require vitamin K through the TV channels. Um, so channel 2, channel 7, channel 9, and channel 10. Um, so ABC, channel 7, channel 9, and 10. Factor 5 doesn't require, doesn't require vitamin K. Victor has a genetic disease that causes the intrinsic pathway uh, to be dysfunctional, require, resulting in ad inadequate clotting. Which of the following coagulation times would be extended? Yeah, I realized that like they also cover a lot of like blood stuff in year one that we cover in year two. Oh, um, good. So APTT, uh, which is for your intrinsic pathway. Um, PT is for your extrinsic. Um, thrombentine is for your common pathway. Um, yeah. What is Vercal's, Vercal, Vercal triad made of and what does it increase the risk of? A mix of B's and a mix of A's. Cool. So this one is A. So if we have this triad of endothelial injury, so you're damaging your blood vessel walls, there's abnormal blood flow. So if it's a bit turbulent um, and abnormal coagulation where it's um, where your coagulation is easily kind of initiated, this places you at greater risk of clotting. Um, and that's not good because you can get blockages of your vascular supplies. Sutures are used to close up gaping wounds because it favors what type of healing? Good. So in this case, it's first intention. So first intention is where the walls of the wound um, are kind of contact with each other. So it, um, <laughs> so it, so it reduces scarring and things like that. Um, second intention occurs if they don't make contact and you kind of get filled up granulation tissue um, and then you get scar tissue filling the gap. Yeah, so first intention is always best. Uh, TH1 cells target what? And then TH2 cells target what? Oh, 
Oh, good. So it's C in this case. Um, I guess the important thing here is that TH2, oh, did you guys learn about this this year? Anyway, as a head start for next year, um, TH2 um, like over, over activation occurs in asthma um, and that's bad. So a TH2 response is good for helminths, um, but in a normal person, um, you don't really want it uh, because then it kind of comes up in asthma. And then regarding pain, which of the following is a true statement about thresholds and tolerance? Cool, good. So threshold is where it becomes painful. So how hot does the pan need to be before it becomes too hot to hold? Um, whereas tolerance is like, you know it's painful, but how long can you keep holding onto it before it, um, before it's too much for you to handle? Gate control theory suggests Oh, whoops. Um, yeah, so um, the option is C here. So distracting yourself from the pain will reduce the perceived pain. So that's why a lot of people kind of rub their knee if they fall over, um, because it helps to distract them. <laughs> yeah, who's the count, David? Um, I don't know whose question this is. But oh, yeah, it it's where I come in. Uh, very, very back heavy. Um, yes, so we can actually skip through some of these if you want, because it I'll is a lot this. of heavy back. That is a little bit excessive. Yep, it's okay. If anybody's Just Too tell bad. me if you want to skip. Yep, not. this one's okay. So please read fast. Adorable. Yep, four, three, two, one. Yep, so for shingles, if you've had chickenpox in the past, you probably have some herpes of the virus hiding in your daughter root. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So you guys probably did a nice, I think you have an ICL um, for spina bifida. So a colta is the least severe form. That's where you only have a bit of a dimpling of the skin or you have a puff of hair. Uh, the other ones, so like meningo, myel, or sil and stuff like that, those are the more severe forms where you actually have the, the, the spinal cord and the meninges. This is very buzzwordy. Four, three, two, one. Yep. So you guys are all correct. So rheumatoid arthritis causes erosions, whereas A, B, A, C, and D are for osteoarthritis. Very nice. Nice. Oh, yes. This is the one. Okay. Four, three, One, go. So blockade of muscarinic receptors, you're thinking overactivation or underactivation of the parasympathetic nervous system. So parasympathetic nervous system usually slows down your heart rate. So if you block the muscarinic receptors, it can cause So like overactivation of your sympathetic. So like, oh, yes. Yeah. Because yes. you lose your parasympathetic. This is very, very buzzwordy. Mm. I, My favorite question. Four, three, two, one. Bam. Yes, comma fibula. So very buzzwordy, um, especially when someone's had their leg cast removed or if they've had a fracture of the head of the fibula, you're immediately going, bam, common fibula nerve. It could technically be the sciatic, but 
uh, the site of injury wouldn't really fit with that. Oh, this sounds like tricky one. Five, four, three, two, one. Did they already answer? I don't think anybody answered. Oh, this is quite sad. See? Okay, yep. Yeah, so it's actually a posterior longitudinal. So um, actually, please go, just Google images, uh, like ligaments of the back. So if you actually look at it, you can actually see the, you've got this vertebral body and then the posterior longitudinal activity prevents it from bulging into this cervical region. I can't explain it using words, so just look at a diagram, but that one's a tricky one. Okay, skip this one. Um, so sternal thrust. Four, three, two, one. Yes, very nice. So right ventricular hypertrophy, um, because you've got the right ventricle lies behind the sternum. Um, the other one would be displacement of the apex B, which is called left ventricular hypertrophy. Yeah, you go through this like 50 billion times in second year as well. Our SOB is shortness of breath. Sorry. Learn upper motor neuron lesions in year one? Yeah, for um, peripheral nervous system uh, oh. examination. Part of like clean skills as well. Like, yeah. oh. Yes, but yes, wonderful. You guys are all correct. Um, upper neuron, you wouldn't get the circulation. That's law of motion. Right. Okay, Five, four, three, two, one. Yep. So it's the proximal interphalangeal joint. So I actually, when I was trying to learn this, I actually went around. I wrote H and B on my my interphalangeal joints, so I could actually remember which was which. And then it's like driving around like that. So every time I look down at my hand, I can see H and B on my hand, and I kind of memorized it that way. Yes, but it's a bony swelling. It's not actually a tumor. I can skip this one. That's all in there. Learn your brachial plexus. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. So know your brachial plexus very well. Oh, this one's kind of fun. I'll give you the one. So you would not expect it to be what you thought. This is the method. Five, four, three, two, one. Yes, so peripheral edema, so aortic valve stenosis. So remember the aortic valve is the valve that kind of gets the blood from the left ventricle to your aorta. So it goes from left ventricle to the rest of your body. So when you have aortic valve stenosis, it's kind of the valve, you know, that kind of helps eject the blood out is not working as well. So you, the blood can't get out the rest of the body. That also means that the blood can't get to the coronary arteries as well. So that could cause angina. Um, and you can also think of the fact that if the blood can't get out, that means you're kind of getting a backlog of blood in the left ventricle. So that can increase the um, pressure there. So you get a backlog and that causes dyspnea. Palpitations can't really explain. And fatigue, you're not getting blood out to the rest of the body so you're feeling fine. Peripheral edema is usually a symptom of, of us, not a symptom, it's a sign of right heart failure, uh, but aortic valve stenosis would be more of a left heart related issue. Oh, I don't think it's actually necessary. We can skip this one. But yeah, so it's a family history, it's five milligrams. If it's no family history, it's usually 500 milligrams. Yeah. On that. Uh, yeah, you can do this. Five, four, three, two, one. Yeah. They're just remembering your muscle. I don't think it tests this. Anyway. Okay. Five, four, three, two, 
to uh, cool. Yeah, so this is a clinical skills thing, which I guess you guys didn't really get to do. So that's called the left lateral decubitus condition, I think it's called. Um, and it just helps you, will help accentuate some of this for the micro valve. I think it's a really bad question. Yeah, okay, so I think the thing here is that's a physical examination finding. So in heart failure, you could get autopnea, but you wouldn't really find that. I guess you could find that physical examination for that question. Um, but yes, you would find a laterally displaced apex beat, especially if it was left heart failure because it looks bigger. Okay, we can skip the rest of my questions. Yeah. Uh, where does that end? I don't know. Um, when the terrible formatting ends is when my questions end. Yeah, so I got these. Oh, oh I think. Oh, sorry. oh yeah, this is mine. The formatting got better. So. Wait, is this mine? This is mine, isn't it? Whoops. Yeah, yeah. yeah bilaminar disc. I don't know how accessible this is. Um, if you guys didn't have embryo this year, did you guys have? Did you guys have embryo? Because I know ours got struck off the exam. No embryo, except for heart. Ah, oh, we can skip this then. Uh, we already went through this, but sixty-two, five, four. Three, yeah, good. Uh, yeah, we can do this one. The axial line. Oh, actually, if you guys didn't do embryo, you wouldn't have learned uh, this. Still clinical skills. It's still clinical skills. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, good. So a bunch of Ds. Um, so the axial line helps us to distinguish. Um, dermatomes that are really separate from each other. So um, with the example of C5, C6, they're right next to each other. So even then the line isn't that distinguished, um, but we have the axial line down the middle here um, and that helps us to distinguish these really different spinal roots. So for example, C6 and T1. Um, yeah. I don't know if you guys learned this. Sorry. So the epimere innervates the back muscles. Um, so it's kind of like if you chop someone down the side of their body. So the, all their back muscles are kind of epimere, whereas all the limbs and all the front of their body is from the hypomere. Um, not sure if you guys learned this though. Okay, 72 year old female in an MVA, um, and this was found. Uh, what artery would be in danger here? Okay, a bit of a mixed response here. Um, So in this case here, there is a femoral neck fracture um, around this point here. Um, and the reason that's dangerous is because you have a potential disruption to the medial femoral circumflex. Um, and that's bad because if you disrupt that, you can get avascular necrosis of the femoral head um, in, in this acetabulum here. Um, John is an elderly man with sore joints at the end of the day. After working in the garden, there's also some stiffness too. Uh, what would be unlikely to be found? Yeah, good. So you wouldn't find more cartilage. If anything, you would find less uh, because degeneration of the cartilage that results in osteoarthritis in this case.
what thigh muscle is able to flex two joints? Oh, wait. Is this right? Yeah. Oh, it's the next question. Yeah, good. So it's Sartorius. Is the next question wrong? Yeah. During hip replacement, they damage a nerve and it's unable to use the gluteus maximus. What nerve is it? Good. So it's inferior gluteal. Um, so it's kind of swapped around. Uh, maximus goes with the inferior, whereas superior goes with the medius and the minimus, which is a bit weird. Uh, piriformis syndrome is where the piriformis irritates the sciatic nerve. Uh, what's the relevant anatomy around this area? Good, so a bunch of A's. And yeah, that's right. So it passes inferior to the piriformis most of the time. Um, there's obviously some variation, but if you have kind of enlargement of the piriformis, then it could irritate the sciatic nerve, um, resulting in this pain. Okay, femoral artery is able to pass from the anterior compartment to the posterior compartment using what structure? Fantastic. So it goes to the adductor hiatus, which is a hole in the adductor magnus. Um, that's fantastic. Pretty cool to see in person if you guys ever get to the dissection labs. Yep. So what special test is this? Sweet. Good. So it's Trend Allenberg's. Um, that's to test the hip abduction. So if they um, stand on their right leg and they lean down to the left, um, that's, a, that's not a good thing because that shows that they have weak abductors, AB abductors. They find a warm and positile mass at the back of their knee. This is suggestive of good. So a popliteal aneurysm. Um, this is separate from a Baker's cyst um, because Baker's cysts shouldn't be positile. Yep, yeah, that's fine. So a patient with a long history of IV drug use is diagnosed with endocarditis. A vegetation is likely to be found on what valve? So next. Yep, yeah, so it's C because... Um, uh, in IV drug use, the bacteria is probably going to spread through your venous back up to your heart. Um, and bacteria, when it gets to your heart, it can kind of start growing there and cause vegetation. That we, that's what we mean by vegetations. And so the tricuspid is going to be the first valve in the pathway from the right atrium. Uh, so it's at the highest risk. Obviously, you can have vegetations elsewhere, um, but less likely in the case of IV. Tonicity can be described as what? Five, four, three, two, one. Yep, so um, tonicity is only a measurement of the uh, non-diffusibles. So it's E. So a red blood cell has an intracellular tonicity of 300 millosmoles. When it is then put in a bath of isosmolar urea, then this will happen. That's such bad wording. Uh, yep, next. Yep, so um, the final cell osmolarity is 600. Okay, I don't think anyone had any questions about why it's not C, so let's move on. A patient is rolled into ED, suffering from severe blood loss due to trauma, causing a great decrease in their blood volume. You know, you've got to stabilize them uh, by treating the, the stopping the bleeding and treating their hypovolemia. What fluid should you inject to treat their hypovolemia? Five. Four, three, two, one, answer. Yep, so it's D. So the main contenders were between C and D. Uh, dextrose is to correct your hydration. It's not really for fluid resuscitation. In fluid resuscitation, you really want to increase the circulatory volume, so your ECF, and that's what your um, 
uh, sodium chloride does it. That's one. That one is for volume correction. All right, 77, patient who has recently traveled overseas comes in with abdominal pain and occasional nausea. He reports noticing his stools have started to float in the toilet and emits a terrible smell. What is the likely diagnosis? Answer, please. Yep, so it's Giardia, your um, pale, floaty, foul smelling stools with recent travel is buzzwords for Giardia. Um, and yep, yeah. next. <laughs> Which of the following drugs is indicated in myasthenia gravis and what is the method of action? Five, four, three, two, one. Yep, so it's C. Um, pyridostigmine is indicated for uh, myasthenia gravis and it is a reversible anticholinesterase. The other three, they are either not indicated uh, for myasthenia gravis or their mode of action has, is wrong. Okay, which of the following is true about adrenergic nerves? Five, Four, three, two, one. Yep, so it's C, adrenergic nerve activation. So your sympathetics will cause bronchodilation. So you can breathe in more oxygen to power your muscles. Uh, a is incorrect, it's negative feedback. Um, B, it's uh, your alpha beta is with your uh, adrenergic nerves and cocaine actually inhibits the removal process. So you've got like, yeah, extra dopamine and adrenaline. Which of these is associated with the event called synapsis? Five, four, three, two, one. Yep, so it's all of these. So synapsis is when you've got your formation of tetrads. So two homologous chromosomes line up side by side. You can get DNA recombination there by crossing over. Um, and it happens during prophase one. So all of these. So a cell of a random species has a diploid number of 68. What is the expected ploidy of this cell when it's in metaphase two? I think we'll give it a little bit longer for this because numbers. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Uh, answer, please. Yep, so it's C. Uh, so we can essentially already eliminate things like B uh, because um, diploid is 2N, so 4N you would expect a double of 68, which is 136. So something like B is already incorrect. Uh, it's C because you've got to remember that um, there's no S phase at the start of the second round of meiosis, uh, so you, you remain in diploid. And that's how you can go from then a diploid to a haploid by the end of meiosis because if you did uh, S phase again, you wouldn't get that haploid number at the end. Not my question. Yep, this is me. So just as a cleaner, spends a lot of time scoring floors and his knees have been and his knees have been becoming sore. Um he's diagnosed with some sort of bursitis. What bursa is this? Yeah, good. So it's pre-patella. Um, so this is uh right below your patella, where you would be leaning on um, if you're on your knees all day. Um, so it's kind of inflammation of your bursa, um, and that's really irritating, and that's probably why it's a bit sore and swollen. The Lockman test is to assess for damage to five, four, three, two, one. Good. So it's the ACL. Um, so this one, you kind of try to pull their knee out from there. Yeah, try to pull their leg out from their knee. Um, and if you can feel it kind of move a lot, then there's probably some damage to the ACL there. Uh, while playing tennis, Casper missteps and rolls his ankle, um, becomes swollen and very bruised. Uh, what injury is he most likely to have and what ligament might be affected? Four, three, two, one. Good, so a bunch of A's. 
backwards. So if we start off with inversion or eversion, inversion injuries are more likely um, because um, you have a greater range of motion for inversion compared to eversion. Um, and then the most likely ligament here is the ATFL or the anterior talofibular ligament. Um, Daniel is being treated with fluoroquinolones um, and at the end of the consultation, she's warned about making large jumps and landing on her feet from great heights. Why could this be? Four, three, two, one. Okay, so this one is actually D. Um, and this is a bit of a side effect that you get from uh, fluoroquinolones or quinolones in general. Um, and that's uh, your tendon, you can get some, you can get some cartilage, damage, cartilage damage or your tendons might be at greater risk of rupturing. Um, so that's why she's warned about making large jumps and landing on her feet because that places extra strain on her Achilles tendon probably. Um, and you don't want to rupture that. Um, Osteoporosis is a good thought though, um, but it's just something we don't see with the fluoroquinolone. Uh, we'll skip this one, um, but it's L234 um, and that's your quadriceps reflex as well. Uh, we'll also skip that one. Yep, following a C-section, um, the doctor believes that a nerve was damaged during it. Um, she has one out of five power on adduction and five out of five for other movements. What nerve has been affected? Four, three, two, one. Fantastic. So it's the obturator nerve. So this nerve passes through your obturator foramen um, and into your medial thigh, which is responsible for adduction, adduction. Um, and that's why she's walking a bit different. Her gait's a bit strange. Um, and she has one out of five power. Uh, we've done this question already. Um, common perineal, also called common perineal, um, sorry, common fibula or common perineal, same thing. Um, head of the fibula, um, foot drop. Yep. So we have a 73 year old male with hypertension and type two diabetes um, and experiences a sudden explosive abdominal pain and back pain. And his blood pressure is 80 over 45 for large pulsatile abdominal mass. What could it be? Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, so in this case, it's more likely to be a ruptured AAA um, compared to a AAA without rupturing. Um, and the reason for that is because he has this sudden pain um, going between the back and the abdomen. Um, and he's also super hypotensive. Um, and given that he's normally hypertensive and he's dropping down to such a low blood pressure, that probably indicates some sort of internal bleeding. Um, which is a ruptured, a ruptured triple A. Um, not sure whose question this is. Oh, me. <laughs> Sorry, I was doing other questions. <laughs> yeah. So, which section of the developing fetus is the most susceptible to teratogens? Um, yeah, answer. The CNS. Um, yeah, just know that one, I guess. Um, woman gives birth to a baby whose spinal cord has failed to develop properly, a lack of which vitamin? Good, folic acid, um, because that will increase your risk of spinal bifida. That's just one also to know. These are a lot of facts that you just kind of need to know at this point. Okay, regarding normal cognitive development, which of the following is true? I 
there's a comma to the answer to this. But yes, good. Good job, everyone. D. So coping with new social and academic demands is the key challenge in which stage? Good. Industry versus inferiority, which is your school age. So if a newborn baby gets an APGAR score of five, what does this signify? Good, need special attention. Yep. So we have a four-year-old boy whose grandfather passed away six months ago. Sorry, the names just changed. <laughs> um, one day they ask whether um, their grandfather is coming to the, his birthday party on the weekend. What is he most likely? So it's D, unable to understand the causes of life. So basically um, it's to do with um, both how old he is, right? So if we think about it, um, if we think about B, he's unlikely to have had prior experience with people he knows dying so that we can automatically cross that out. Um, unable to grasp the concept of theory of mind. I'm pretty sure like if we go back into the notes, which I can't be bothered getting up right now. But basically, if you go back into the notes, it's to do with how old he is right now. So a four-year-old is right now probably unable to understand the causes of life. It, if we think about E, that's more of an once they get a little bit older, um, thinking about it as a physiological or behavioural phenomenon. Okay, next. Another one about death. It's a little bit morbid, these questions. Good C. And that's just another one to know. So we have 37 year old man with a moderate intellectual disability. Um, you guys can read the rest of the STEM. But <laughs> what are his, what would option would be best? I think this was actually one of our exam questions because I remember seeing it before. Um, yes, so I'm seeing E, but yes, the best option would be B. I think this is also a, a, pre, a past exam question because I've also seen this question before. Um, oh, did I not put the answer? But yeah, E. Yeah, this is the answer, but yeah, that's that's right. Okay, schizo. Yes, E. Good, good, good. Okay, so I'm t people are telling me that the other answer was not. Okay, we'll come back to that one in a sec. Okay, if we look at the answer, equifinality. So many different life paths can lead to the same consequence. 
and now it's not me anymore. Yeah, that's mine. I think all the questions that are bolded are mine. So which causes the relative refractory period? Good old physiology. Five, four, three, two, one. Yep, so it's G, it's the voltage gated um, potassium channels. So just remember that in the refractory period, your potassium channels are still open, um, but your uh, sodium voltage gated channels, they're still inactive. Okay, so in your refractory period, it's just some of your sodium uh, gated channels are still inactive, so they can't be activated again, and it's harder to generate that action potential. Um, in an absolute refractory period, that's when pretty much all of your sodium gated um, sodium uh, channels are inactive, so you pretty much just can't generate an action potential at all. Yeah. What is the resting membrane potential of neurons? Five, four, three, two, one. Uh, yes, it's a uh, negative, uh, negative, not positive. All right, next. Uh, which of the following nerve fibers would most likely transmit signals the fastest? Five, four, three, two, one. Yep, so it's A alpha because they're the most highly myelinated and myelination helps with signal conduction. Next. What type of signal travels along the smallest fiber type out of the following fiber types? I think that's a weird question, but. Five, four, three, two, one. Yep, so the smallest one here is your C fibers and C fibers, they do slow pain and also itch. Uh, fast pain is, is not C fibers. Uh, so the extra is what do the other three fibers transmit? Just, I guess, have it in your head or something. And then we'll reveal the answers. Now, yep, so proprioception is A alpha, touch is A beta, fast pain is your A delta. All right, next. So I close my eyes during a difficult lecture, but I still know where my limbs are, even though I technically can't see them anymore. What pathway is helping me do this? Five, four, three, two, one. Yep, so this is my DCML pathway because that one helps with proprioception, which is what this is. This is the ability to engage where you are in relation to the rest of the world. Yep, next question. Where does the DCML pathway decussate? Five, four, three, two, one. Yep, it decussates up higher in your medulla. Uh, next question, where does the spinothalamic pathway decussate? Three, two, one. Yep, so this one is, it just decussates as soon as it enters your spinal cord, which is one of the differences between the two. Next, uh, which is which region do sympathetic nerves originate from? Uh, five, four, three, two, one. Yep, so they uh, come from your thoracolumbar. Uh, which of the, where do your parasympathetics come from then? Oh, uh, whoops, yeah. Where do your, para yeah, see, this where your parasympathetic comes from. Alrighty, next. Uh, where would the cell body of an afferent sensory neuron be? I'm sorry, guys, this is me using snipping tool. That's all I have on my computer. Uh, five, four, three, two, one. Yep, so the pink circle, that's your dorsal root ganglion. That's where your cell body is. All righty, next one. Yeah, I'm such a good artist. Uh, what type of nerves would you expect to find in, which of the, in each of the following regions? I think this one requires a bit of thinking, so we'll give you a bit of extra time. Uh, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay, my bad. You guys are on top of this. Yep, so green, that's where your mixed spinal nerve is, where you have both sensory and motor nerves uh, going through there. Where does the spinal cord end? 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. One, yeah, so it ends at your uh, level of L1. 
2. What is trisomy 13? 5, 3, 2, 1. Yes, for towels. Patient presents with a unilateral red, red and swollen leg. You note that the skin seems to have a shiny appearance. Upon checking vitals, you notice the patient has a fever. Which organism most likely or commonly has caused this? Five, four, three, two, one. Yep, when in doubt, Staph aureus is the answer. Uh, but yes, uh, these are key words for cellulitis, which is commonly caused by Staph aureus. Um, don't forget Clostridium perfringens, though. That one is gives you gas gangrene. And a buzzword is crepitus, which is where you move their joints and you hear like this, I don't know, like crackling sound because of air bubbles. All righty, next question. Which of the following is true about motor control? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Answer. Uh, yep, so it's C. I think a uh, popular answer was B. So small motor units, they are recruited first because they have the lowest threshold. That part is correct, but they uh, don't tire out easily. So your small ones are fatigue resistant and your large ones are not. Uh, fatigue or resistant. Alrighty, next. Which of the following is false regarding bacterial toxins? Five, uh, okay, five, four, three, two, one. Uh, next. Yep, so A is false. It's, it's lipid A, it's not lipid O. Sorry about that, uh, but the rest are, are all true. Uh, so B is true. Um, and yet yeah, I've put some diagrams to explain the, the other ones. Which of the following is false uh, regarding central control of the autonomic nervous system? Five, four, three, two, one. Yep, so just remember the hypothalamus pretty much senses everything, including stuff outside your blood brain barrier. Next. Uh, what LPS, is the. Sorry, LPS stands for lipopolysaccharide. Ah, uh, yes, sorry. Uh, what is the gold standard cardiac biomarker? Just reveal the answer, please. Yep, so it's your troponin, and that would be, should be elevated uh, in the case of heart failure. Okay, a bit wordy. This one, which of the following is true regarding mycardial infarctions? Five, four, three, two, one. Yep, so ST elevation with the STEMI and a STEMI is complete vessel occlusion. And this is just a info slide for you. Uh, which drug would you prescribe for a patient presenting with hypertriglyceridemia? Five, four, three, two, one. Yep, so that's your fibrates, uh, which is a PPAR alpha. Uh, works on that enzyme and that act increases um, lipase, which cleaves your triglycerides. Which of the following sensations returns first as anesthetic starts to wear off? Five, four, three, two, one. Yep, so touch, this one's the last one blocked, first to come back. Next one. Which of the following is true regarding atherosclerosis? Five, four, three, Five, four, three, two, one. Yep, so that is correct. And I've explained why the other ones are not. Which of the following is true regarding pain? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, Three, two, one, answer.
Yep, so A, it, A is correct. You have to remember that enkephalin, they activate your opioid receptors. Um, they inhibit the initial firing of that afferent nociceptive neuron. Fast pain uh, is highly localized. Uh, slow pain is transmitted via the paleospinothalamic tract. Um, and your descending pathway decreases pain perception. It doesn't increase it through modulation. Alrighty, what is this? Five, four, three, two, one. And yep, it's a simple cuboidal. Uh, I believe that's your kidneys. Next, okay, what is this one? Five, four, three, two, one. Yep, that's your simple columnar, long rectangular. Okay, next one. Uh, what is this? Uh, five, four, three, two, one. And this is actually your transitional epithelium, which is the stuff that lines uh, your urinary bladder, your urinary tract. Um, and this is essentially just where the cells can like really change shape. Because if you think about it, your bladder kind of needs to expand a lot um, to hold urine. So that's what that looks like. Next, what is this? Five, four, three, two, one. Yep, yeah, this is your keratinized stratified squamous. That is not mine. Heine, is this yours? Um, oh, yes. I don't know why it's here, but like, sure, yeah. Back to HLSD. I'm getting a lot of bees. Yep. Um, yeah. They, I want to say they don't ask questions like this a lot, but like if you ever do get a question, it'll be like one question with something like this. This is a possible question. This one they do ask. This one they do ask. <laughs> It's always borderline personality disorder. No idea why. It's just only only ask this one. Yeah, but everyone's right. B. I don't know how many of the, yeah, I only did two questions on this. Yeah, this is me. Yeah, I think I moved your questions because they were numbered wrong. <laughs> um, cool. So this, this person has an aortic dissection. Um, and between what two layers would this be found? Yep, so a bunch of, oh, sorry, there should be an end. There should be an and in between here. Um, so good. So between the intima and the media, um, so when blood kind of gets between these two layers, it forms something called a false lumen. Um, and due to the blood pressure, it kind of continues to separate these two layers from each other. What lies deepest within the popliteal fossa? Five, four, three, two, one. So we have the popliteal artery. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if they actually ask you this, but um, it's good to know the structures from most deep to most superficial. Which artery is the dorsalis pedis artery a continuation of? Good. Three, two, one. Good. So it's anterior tibial artery. Um, yeah, and often for diabetics, sometimes you can, you might miss uh, these. These peripheral pulses might be a bit weaker. Um, but yeah. Good, so it's the anterior tibial artery turns into your dorsalis pedis pulse. What muscle separates the subclavian artery from its vein? Five, 
four, three, two, one. Good. So this one is the anterior scalene muscle. Um, I'm not sure if you guys can actually get tested on this. Um, it might come into like more head and neck stuff, um, but your subclavian artery and your vein are separated by anterior scalene muscle. Um, and, it, and in this space, it also has the brachial plexus, which is probably a good thing to know as well. So brachial plexus is between the anterior and the middle scalene muscles. I think, yeah. What is contained within the tunica media of a blood vessel? Five, four, three, two, one. Good, so your smooth muscle is in the media. Um, endothelium is on the intima because that's in the middle of, or in the most innermost surface. Uh, vasovasorum is the blood supply to the blood vessel itself. Um, so you find this in your really thick blood vessels. Um, and that's in the adventitia. Um, and same with your fibroblasts and your collagen, all in the adventitia. Um, the Dr. Os Oscar hates to listen to the aortic valve. Uh, what surface anatomy would this be found at? Three, two, one. Good, so we've got a bunch of Bs and that's correct. So your right second intercostal space is um, your aortic valve, where it's your left one. Um, just across the sternum is your pulmonary. Um, and then C is your tricuspid and E is your um, mitral. Which of the following cannot be found at the sternal angle? Oh, wait, this might be a bad question. Oh, sorry. Three, two, one. Um, yeah, bad question. Um, but yeah, so sternal angle, also called the angle of Louis, um, you have a rat plant. So if you look up rat plant um, acronym for the sternal angle, you'll find all of the significant things that occur at that point. Um, and that's often a good acronym to know. Um, but I'll fix this up. Chronic nerve comes from what? Three, two, one. Good, C345 keeps the diaphragm alive. Chordae tendinae are important for what function? Five, four, three, two, one. Good, so it prevents eversion. So your valves are meant to face um, kind of towards the ventricle side. Um, so the purpose of chordae tendinae is to stop them from everting the other way um, when you have ventricular contraction. Um, so it prevents eversion of AV valves. What's the significance of having an individual with left dominance of the heart? Three, two, one. So this one here, so left dominance um, is talking about which, uh, which artery of the heart will supply the posterior descending. Um, and the reason that could be worse off is because if you occlude your left coronary artery, that means you lose both your left anterior descending as well as your posterior descending. Um, and that's not good because you don't want that part of your heart to die. Tall tender T waves across all leads could indicate five, four, three, two, one. Good, so hyperkalemia. Um, so if we see a global tenting, you wanna think something more systemic. Um, and for that, we think hyperkalemia. So potassium levels that are way too high can cause this. Um, but at the same time, we also don't want hypokalemia because that can also cause um, cardiac arrhythmias and other issues. Which of the following accurately describes a second degree type two AV block? 
give me more time for this one to read through them all. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, so with a second degree type two, yeah, I got this one, yeah. Um, with secondary type two, um, your PR intervals are remaining the same. Um, so it's always, let's say four, no, it's always, let's say, um, yeah, four small squares. Um, and then suddenly it'll just disappear. So you'll get your P wave, but you won't get your QRS complex. Um, and that's different from the type one um, because they will slowly extend. So it'll be like three small squares, four small squares, five small squares, and then it'll disappear. Then three, four, five, disappear. Three, four, five, disappear. Um, so D and E are to do with second degree. Um, C is talking about third degree AV block, so complete heart block. Um, B is talking, it's the opposite of heart block. So it's uh, Wolf Parkinson or Le Levine. I don't know how to say his name, um, but it's where you get a really short um, PR interval. Um, and A is talking about type, oh, sorry, A is talking about first degree AV block. This one is not mine. Bradford Hill criteria. Oh, that's me now. Population health. We love a little bit of pop health in our life, but yes, everyone's right. It's D. It's supposed to be reversibility. Um, they do ask about Bradford Hill. Like you also need to know about like temporality. It's absolutely essential. And they're the two main questions that they usually ask. Cool. Give people some time to read. Yep, great, A. Um, yeah, you can look at the rest in your own time, but yep, A. Okay, this is a very typical question. I'll give you some time to read the stem. The, um, you don't have to copy the numbers down because I kept them in the slides, but this is a very typical way they ask questions. It's um, very maths kind of focused. Um, but yeah, so there was an outbreak of COVID on a ship. Um, and so now they've all been required to take a test. And so if we go to the next, um, yeah. So what is this test's specificity? Bro, the amount of, like, <laughs> the way I crammed this <laughs> the night before the exam, Okay, I'm getting a bit of a toss up between E and F. What, let's have a look. Um, I'll summarize, I'll, there's a table at the very, very end. I can't tell you the answer now, otherwise I will give away the rest of the answers. What is this test's sensitivity? Mm -hmm. Okay, if we look at the answer, yes, E, and then you can kind of guess all the, all the values that I'm going to ask you for, a positive predictive value. Mm -hmm. And lastly, what is the negative predictive value? Goody, good, good. Cool. Did I throw it? Yeah. So this is basically, um, I think it was just the first one. So sensitivity is the proportion with the disease who test positive. So it'll be your A of your A plus C. But yeah, this is a very common way they ask questions. And then yeah, memorize you can, this. Yeah, it's you like need to four, know this. It's four free marks. Uh, would they change around the headers or can we just know? You just know which boxes. They don't change around the headers. They, it's always 
presented this way. Um, so yeah. Sometimes they might not give you the table though, I think. Mm, yeah. That's... Or at least our exams, they don't give us a table. They give us like text. Oh, really? Um, yeah, it's like a breast, it's like a mammogram one where it's like out of a thousand people, eight of them had breast cancer. Oh. Seven of them had like a positive mammogram and of the remaining 70 also had a positive mammogram. Something like that. That's a bit of a rip, but yeah. Um, and I think there's another one after this. Yes, so um, the same numbers because I'm lazy, but there was also an outbreak of food poisoning. This is like the cruise ship of hell. Um, and so we, I think there's only two questions for this one. So same numbers, but what is our odds ratio? Good. People remember? Yep, just AD over BC. I think I just remembered it just as like, not the discriminant, but the thing that like you do to multiply like inverse matrices, just like AD, BC. I don't know. That's how I remembered it. It was really weird. Anyway, yep, and our next one. What is the risk of developing food poisoning if someone ate dessert? So this one's actually asking you for the relative risk. Also, don't blame me for this question. I got this from PS Panda and I just changed the wording. Um, so yeah, so your relative risk is your risk in the ex exposed divided by the risk in the unexposed. So yeah, and this is the table. Um, I think mainly it would be relative risk. They might ask you the population attributable percent. They might call it different things though. Um, but those are the main ones, like odds ratio, relative risk, and maybe the fraction. But they'll, yeah, just know like what they can, like the different ways that they name things because they use them interchangeably. Oh, there's more. Oh, my God. Okay. Yeah, this was an easy question. We're so close. This is like 149. There are only like 10 questions left. Yeah, sorry, we there's so much pop up at the end. But yes, meta-analysis. Top of the triangle. Yes, top of the triangle. Which one has difficulty establishing temporality? Yes, good. Yeah, you do need to do your study designs. Next. Okay, which of the following study designs looks at an exposure that can lead to many different outcomes? This is the one that I could never remember. I always got it wrong. So yes, cohort. So cohort is looking at the exposure to different outcomes. People get it confused with case control, which is the other way around. And I think there's a last question from me. <laughs> yeah, so A. And B is just a type two error. The rest are not things. <laughs> I just think of the picture where it's like the doctor telling the guy you're pregnant. So Pre yeah, the pregnant one, positive. the meme. Just think of that one. Yeah, this is false positive. Cool, that's it from me. Whose is this? All right. Oh, oh. mine, mine, yeah. yeah. Okay. So yeah, uh, if it's a posterior dislocation, what would it be? Okay, um, three, two, one. All right. Yeah, so you have to know like posterior dislocation it causes your, you can see it in the picture, it actually causes it to be adducted and internally rotated. And this is something that they like to test. Yeah. Okay, this is a bit of a tricky one. So which is not a border. Oh, 
All right. Okay. Yeah. So you just need to know your um, sail. So it's actually the medial border of the adductor longus, not the lateral border. Yeah. So which is the order for the unhappy triad? All right, yeah. Yeah, so I'm happy to try it. Just need to know the order is ACL, MCL, and then your medial meniscus, because the MCL is connected to your medial meniscus. Um, yeah. All right, yeah. So actually, um, B, because it's, it's the lack of pulses, which is quite sad. So what happens during a tarsal tunnel syndrome? All right, yeah, so it's E because um, your muscles that are affected are, yeah, I just have to remember your your acronym and your mnemonic um, from Dick and Very Not See Harry. So, uh, tibialis posterior, your flexor digitorum longus. So, your flexion of your toes gets affected. Yeah. So, a positive trend in Berg sign, what would be your physical examination? Yeah, so the answer is actually B, because it's the contralateral side. So um, basically, your if your right side's affected, right side's affected, your left side will droop. The unsupported side will sag inferiorly. I've done this question like three times. <laughs> yeah, but actually this one is not um, common oh. fibula because um, the eversion is normal. It's deep fibula instead. Tricky. Yeah. So if your foot is inverted, what would it be? Yeah, so it's D, deltoid. So it's your medial uh, ligament, which is your deltoid ligament. Now if you invert it, what would it be? Yep. It's D, so you just have to know your lateral ligaments, so mainly your anterior telofibular ligament gets damaged. So it's testing your dermatomes. All right, yeah, so the answer is actually C. So you just have to think about your big toe is at your L5 dermatome. So try to correspond which myotome would it be. So it's knee flexion if it's L5.
And that's quite high yield, like they always like to ask this. Yeah, it's actually E. Your medial circumflex always gets affected whenever you have a head of femur fracture. All right, yeah. So the answer is actually C. So they're asking for your medial leg, not your medial thigh. So medial leg would actually be your saphenous now. Very tricky. So dislocation of femur. Yep. The actual the answer is actually sciatic. So you can just see from the picture, the main thing that gets affected is the sciatic nerve. This is the last question. Yep, great. So you all should know this. Your medial collateral ligament is attached to a medial meniscus. Yep. And that's it. Yay. All right, guys. Good job, everyone. Wow, we made it. I stop recording. <laughs>